Hello and welcome to the 14th video in my series on getting started with AutoCAD. My name is Chris and in this video we're going to talk about tables. Please note that I'm using AutoCAD 2015 and as such there will be visual differences between what was on my screen and what you've got given that you're not also using AutoCAD 2015. So that out of the way, let's get started here. You'll notice the first thing here is that I've actually minimized this uh, the ribbon up at the top and this is because when I right click oops. When I, when I make a right click selection, you'll notice I have a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't actually fit on my screen um, inside my, my recording window. So I'm, I'm recording at uh, 720p here. Uh, so bear with me if there are a few things that slip off the screen, I'll try and keep them on the screen for you. So let's start here by going to the annotate tab. I'm gonna pull this down really quick so you guys can see a little better. See, we're on the annotate tab, and you'll notice up top here there's a section for tables. Now, there are all sorts of other options here in tables that, that we're going to come to in another video, but for right now, we're going to stick with just the main table command. So as the table command suggests, it allows you to create a table with rows and columns. You can have uh, all sorts of different things in tables. So it really it's a fantastic feature. It's a great way to organize your data. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but um, classes that I've taken will have uh, professors had students do something like this where they'd say, okay, you've got uh, part one, and then we're going to copy that down. Point three, and point six, point nine, point one, two, and oops. 1.2 and et cetera, et cetera. And then, and then you make your change, you make your change, you make your change. And the whole time you gotta be thinking, there's gotta be a better way to do this, right? So you want a table. So we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna say, this is gonna be log nut. This is going to be carriage bolts. This is going to be 3 8 inch chamfer you know you get the idea and this this I mean, this works um, I guess it plots the same in the end but as far as editing your data on the fly this is really really an awful way to do things so we're gonna talk about a better way and that's the table command so let's pull up a table here really quick we're gonna make a table that is two columns by let's say 10 data rows Row heights, one line, that's fine. We'll leave all these defaults the way they are. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now we get to pick where we'd like our table to be inserted. I'm gonna go ahead and keep working in the positive quadrant of my drawing here. Um, I, it's an old habit that I'm not sure how relevant that is anymore. If anyone has any information on that, I, I'd love to hear more about that in the comments below. Let's go ahead and take a look at this table that we dropped in here. Now you'll notice we got rows and columns. And when you select in here, we've got rows that are named, uh, pardon, here we go, the rows that are named uh, numerically and columns that are named uh, alphabetically. And we have a heading column to start with. So let's go ahead and give this a title. Let's say this is called heading. There we go, nice and original. Now I'll show you a couple of things that you can do here. The first things, first couple really important things to know are that uh, when you press tab on the end or enter on the very, very end, it doesn't add a new row. So if you want to add more rows to your table, you make a selection uh, of however many rows you'd like to add, and then you right click. And this is where this is where I'm going to minimize this, the ribbon again here really quick. You right click and you go to rows and you select insert above or insert below, or you can delete them all together. So let's say we want to add more below. So we're going to go and insert below, and there we have more rows. The same thing happens with columns. So if you want to add more columns, let's say we want two more columns in this, we select you know two columns. It doesn't matter how many rows we select in this case. And we say we want to insert two to the right, and there we have two more columns to the right. So let's start with some real basics here when it comes to working with a table, and that's just data entry, right? Um, you can have, obviously, numbers, you can have letters, 
you can have a combination of numbers and letters. You'll notice that that I typed 1A and it translated it as 1AM. Uh, you can do dates. It's 12, 24, 2015. And it will interpret that as a date. Or let's see, we, we can do that as, I believe you can do dates other ways as well. Let's see. 25 25 oh. <laughs> that interpreted as a fraction so there are all sorts of different things that you can do here that's a good idea to play around with it I'm to be honest when it comes to inserting data into a table um, most of the data that I add is pretty basic unless I'm pulling it from a spreadsheet in which case I do my my computation in a spreadsheet and then pull it in and again we're gonna come back to that in another video so Get excited in advance for that one. That's, that's really fantastic functionality. So let's let's uh, start by by making a pattern here of numbers. Say one, two, three, four. One of the cool things about this is that again, like Excel, you can make a selection of of cells that you'd like, and you can pull down on that and have it repeat a pattern. So if you've got two, four, six, eight, we can pull down on this, pardon me, and you'll notice that it will iterate on that pattern. This will, it won't do this with letters. Uh, so if you notice here, A, B, C, D, let's try that. Oops, there we are. What it will do is it will repeat through those options rather than iterating on the letters themselves. However, uh, if you have letters that are in addition with uh, numbers that are in addition to letters, let's say a one, a two, a three, this will continue the pattern and iterate through it. So pattern iteration is a really nice thing that they can do. This works out really well if you're making, say, a sheet list and you have sheet A1, A2, A3, A4, and you don't want to have to type it again and again and again. It's, that's stuff that computers are really good at and people will get really bored doing. So let the computer do the work. Now, after playing around with the table for a little while, you've probably noticed that when you click and drag, unlike your normal selection where you click once and you just pull in either direction, uh, you get a selection. Here you have to click and drag and then let go and it will highlight anything that you selected. It doesn't matter which direction you pull from. This is a little thing to get used to. Um, it's not like the rest of AutoCAD. This is completely separate in terms of functionality. So a single click will give you a single cell. Double clicking on a cell will let you jump into it immediately and make changes to it. So let's go ahead and jump into some other functionality here. Let's sum this column up really quick. In order to do that, what we can do is we can select our, our column. And again, I'm going to pull this down so you can see my dialog when I right click. I'm going to go ahead and right click, and you can select Insert. And you've got the option to insert a formula. And let's go ahead and sum this column up right here. So there we go. Sum just like that. And you'll notice in it comes the sum. And if we make changes to this, let's say we turn that to 200, obviously it updates for us. So that's a nice way to be able to, to sum part counts or, or something like that if you need to be able to do quick calculations in your spreadsheet. You've probably noticed when we went here to insert that there were some additional options here. Uh, you can do an average. I'll pull that up again. You can do an average uh, count. This is kind of nice. You can count instances of, of text in your table. Um, you can add your own custom equation, so you can add and subtract and multiply and divide. And, um, and then you've got the option to do fields. Now, again, we're going to come back to fields in another video because fields are, this is a pretty deep function, but you can do all sorts of, of neat stuff with fields in AutoCAD. Fields are essentially uh, predefined variables that you can access and pull data out of. 
where you can put data into and, and have that be repeated across your drawing and be more dynamic that way. The last thing I wanted to show you here was the ability to be able to insert a uh, a block. Now we don't have any blocks in our drawing right now, so I'm going to make one really quick. Just make a circle and we'll offset it by like that. And I take that, make that a block. I call it circle. Circle. Good enough. And we're going to make an M text. And I'm going to put it right in the middle here. I'm just going to call it number one. And we'll stick that right there. I'm going to save it, close it. You notice we've got this block here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cell, I'm going to right click on it, and then I'm going to go to insert and block. And we've got this drop down that lets us select any of our blocks that are in the drawing and go ahead and click OK. You'll notice it comes right in. The cool thing about this is that you can make all sorts of little custom bits, all these little blocks that you'd like, and you can have them be a part of your table and you can have them dynamically readjust with the table. So for example, if I want these to be in the middle center of their cells, I can select the cells, go over here to properties, say I don't want these top left, I want the middle center, and there we go. Now before we call this video quits, I'm going to show you one more thing here really quick, and that is the ability that um, you have to be able to break a table into multiple columns. Now this is pretty straightforward. What happens is you, you select your table, you click this middle option here, this little middle down arrow, and you'll notice that it will automatically break it like that for you. Now let's say you want to have the heading carry through. Again, this is a table property, so you select the table, you go over here, and we say, yes, we want table breaks, but in addition to table breaks, we want to repeat the top labels, so yes, and there we go. And it will always maintain that size. You can also define that size, that the break size in the table properties itself. So if you go down here, you can say the break height is going to be five. And there it is. And again, five units. We're just functioning in, in the default decimal units that AutoCAD, uh, ACAD.DWT comes with. So. So that's tables in a nutshell. And again, this is a really, really brief overview of tables. We're going to dig a lot more into it. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to come back to this idea of putting blocks into tables when we talk about dynamic blocks. And we're going to talk more about uh, pulling data into AutoCAD from an Excel document and pulling data out of AutoCAD into an Excel document and how, how that, that functions both ways, the linking data. So that's about it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you thought this video was good, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought this video was great, go ahead and subscribe. I'll bring you more of them, and I will see you in the next video.